Because how can you pour into someone else from an empty cup? Okay, hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Makeup Diaries with Mariah. And of course, sorry, I get distracted so easily, it's so pretty. And of course, I am Mariah, and today's episode, I know I say this every week, I'm always like, this episode is so important to me, but this is actually like very very important to me i feel like it's time that we have the conversation or i have the conversation with you about therapy um especially therapy for like my fellow black girls out there because i think it's something that's so important it's something that's been so helpful and vital in my sanity and in my like coming of age i feel like as a young black woman is discovering like therapy and how important because i feel like a lot of times especially in like you know the african-american community like we often i feel like a lot of our older like aunts and uncles and mothers and fathers and grandmas and just our elders kind of like look down on therapy and look down on you know uh medication for anxiety and for depression and for like other mental illnesses because we feel like um you know i feel like so much of our culture is rooted in the church and so we should be going to pray it away um but there's nothing wrong with doing that and supplementing that with something like therapy, which I think every person, every human being, every, uh, every, everybody should go to therapy. You need to go to therapy even if you don't think you need to go to therapy. I know, I literally don't know one person who doesn't suffer from anxiety or like some sort of some form of depression or some form of mental illness that they would like, I think every person I know would benefit from seeing a therapist and so it's just very vital so today I'm going to talk about my therapy process and what that's been like and more importantly I'm going to talk about the three biggest lessons I have learned in therapy and hopefully um it's something you can take with you in your daily life and hopefully it's something that can convince you if you aren't all if you're watching this and you haven't you know gone to therapy or you haven't tried to like seek it out um hopefully this will convince you to do so because that is my end goal i want you to go to therapy i really really do so i think what was the starting point for me um the the first question you have to ask is like and the question you get i get a lot of times when i talk to people about therapy is how did you know when it was time to start seeing someone. So if I go back to my senior year of college, it was, I struggled for a lot of reasons. Um, it was, I was, I've always, you know, struggled with like, you know, anxiety and forms of depression and, you know, uh, OCD. And I've always struggled with those issues, but I've never gotten them diagnosed because I was like, oh, you're fine. Like you're very, the thing is, is I'm a very high, functioning person so even when i my life is a mess i like power through it and you think that that is you know a strength but it isn't because you're not dealing with the issue you're avoiding it and so when you avoid the issue like for so long it builds up and it builds up and it builds up and you know how they say like it's gonna boil over well it did for me senior year it kind of like boiled over I had been working myself to death I had been stressing myself about all these things that were completely out of my control and I was so afraid of the uncertainty of the future and and you know things like that and there were so many things that were unknown and I am not a person who copes well with the unknown. I need to have a plan. I need to know what's going on. And so the fact that I didn't, it was hard for me. So I was, I struggled quite a bit and then it started to affect my sleep. It started, I started to get all types of intrusive thoughts. And if you are not a person who has, you know, struggled with OCD or who has been like, you know, open about like your struggles with OCD and you probably think about yourself that, um, you know, this is, 
this is like it's weird about you but intrusive thoughts are basically so here's the thing about our minds a lot of the time in the way that when I was seeing a psychiatrist that you know he framed it was that you should not view your mind as a friend you should view it as a frenemy because the mind works and it works even without you knowing that it's working and sometimes it's working against you to get a better reaction for you later and I know that sounds like weird but it's the truth so uh, intrusive thoughts are like so we get thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of thoughts every day and most of the time we don't pay those thoughts any mind but then sometimes there'll come this thought that's like crazy and you're like what does that mean does that mean something about my character that I'm thinking sometimes it's sexually inappropriate sometimes it's like violent sometimes it's like it's crazy these these intrusive thoughts and you and they're called intrusive because you aren't conjuring them they're just coming to you because what they want to do what the brain wants to do is it wants to work you up and then it wants to calm you down so you can release those endorphins. And so then once you're calm again, it wants to work you up again so that again, it can get those calming endorphins because it likes it. So it's putting you through this crazy, vicious cycle and you don't need to pay it any mind. So I think the number one biggest rule that I learned in therapy is the mind is a friend. Is a, No, I'm sorry. Is the mind is a frenemy it is not a friend and so you need to view it and you need to view it with a grain of salt and the way that I deal with intrusive thoughts when I get them because you know it's very hard to ignore them a lot of the times because sometimes you're like this is so weird and it's so completely out of character you have to let it pass you cannot because if you give into the thought and you start arguing with it that is when you 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 lose you, it's already won because it got you to argue with it so when I started having like crazy intrusive thoughts and it made me very afraid and I was like very afraid that even though I, I had no desire to hurt myself I didn't I wasn't that kind of person but I was having these crazy intrusive thoughts and then I all of a sudden I can't sleep I can't eat like I'm losing weight and I was I was so nervous and I'm so anxious and I was so afraid and I was like once it started affecting my sleep, which is something I've never had an issue with, like no matter where I've been in my life, I've always been able to sleep through it. But once I wasn't able to sleep anymore, I was like, you got to go see somebody. You got to talk to somebody because now you, the thoughts of like hurting yourself, even though I, I, I am not suicidal, I was not suicidal. But the, the intrusive thoughts made me think that I was suicidal. So I was like, you got to go talk to somebody. My advice is don't let it get to that point. So the point at which you should go and seek therapy, the point, it depends on you as a person, but you have to, if you get to that point where you're like, I don't know another way out, that is when you need to seek out help. You need to talk to someone. And believe me, it's hard because, you know, as open as I am on this channel, you know, as open as I am on, as I am in my life and in my work, I'm a private person and so I don't like to like admit a lot of things but and so I definitely don't want to go and talk to a stranger I don't know about like my deepest thoughts and fears and you know childhood traumas because it's like this I don't know this person so that's the next step um is you is well I'm sorry that's not the next step the next step is the battle with your insurance company which becomes a job in itself so the battle with your insurance company to pay for this because you know a lot of the times they're not going to readily tell you that this is a service that is available to you mostly because they're they're these people are incredibly greedy and awful and if they prioritize mental health the way they say they prioritize mental health they would make it a lot more accessible you have to go and search for it if you have insurance you know if you're one of those like lucky people because there are a lot of americans who are uninsured if you have insurance there's a number on the back of your insurance card that says member services you call them you wait however long and you call back however many times you have to do and this is what I had to do to say do you offer what kind of mental health services does my insurance cover they have to tell you and then you say okay I need you to link me to providers in my network they give you a list of these providers and then it, they would say well now it's your job to take it from here and of course like us you know we're young 
adults. We're very used to our parents making all of our doctor's appointments and shit. But you have to take this initiative upon yourself to then reach out to all those providers and get an appointment. Getting an appointment is a job in itself. It's another job because it's so difficult because these people, especially because these are the people who take insurance, like the one that I have, which is government insurance, they are way, way, way backed up. Like they have tons and tons and tons of clients. And so they're, they're just, they're very busy. So you have to catch you, but you have to wait it out because it's worth it. So eventually you get an appointment and of course it's not going to be right away. And the first appointment is really just like intake. They're just getting to know you, why you're here, what you're wanting to explore. They ask you a bunch of general questions, but then they start to get into, you start to unpack you know why you're here you start to unpack what this can do for you you start to unpack what what you've gone through in your life and you have no idea it's scary it's scary to go and tell your thoughts to another person and it makes you feel like you are weak because you couldn't handle it that's the opposite of the truth because what I've learned in therapy is that the first step to healing is to recognize that you have a problem is to recognize that you need help and you have no idea the amount of strength that it takes because there are millions and millions and millions of people who just refuse to and who go through life with these problems inflicting these problems on other people they they, they go into relationships and they they leave all they put all this baggage into these relationships they go into parenthood and they put all this baggage in their on their children they're emotionally immature in their jobs and in their parenting and in their relationships because they refuse to admit that they need help and that there's someone out there and that there's someone out there who can help them and so it's it's difficult because it's it, it's not something that's easy. It really isn't, but it's so necessary. And especially for black women. And so that brings me to like the next, you know, step. You have to find the right provider for you. For me, it was very important that my therapist was a black woman just because I feel like I I had a therapist, the first one that I got linked to back in college. And she was a nice like white lady. She was very, but I don't, I didn't feel safe around her. I didn't feel like I could, I didn't feel like she was someone who could understand and who could relate to my problems and my issues, you know, living in the world as a black woman. And so you need to find the kind of provider that is going to bring you comfort when you're with them, who is going to bring you like reassurance, who you're going to be able to open up to. And that takes a while. And you have to be honest with the provider if it's not working because ethically if they if they would never allow you to continue to see them if you felt like it wasn't working it's a it's about it's like a dating game you know you have to do a bit of speed dating and I know that seems difficult but when you find that right provider when you find that right therapist who just gets you and fits so well with you and your personality and the issues that you want to address it's like like magic can happen once you because you feel so comfortable opening up to them so you need to do that so I, I went through a bit of a dance trying to find the right provider but then eventually I did I found a provider who was you know a black woman and who was very like de like specialized in dealing with the kind of issues that I was going to therapy for and a lot of her patients um, were women who had, you know, suffered through traumatic events and things like that. So she was well equipped. She's well equipped to, you know, talk to me the way that I need to be talked to and help me the way that I need to be helped. And she's gentle because I don't want any tough love. I'm, I'm done with tough love in my life. Like, I don't want it if it's not going to come to me gently. I've had enough of that in my life. I want it gently. That's super important to me in therapy. And she gets that. And she gets that. And and I had to, and it's okay to tell them what's working and what isn't working. And don't feel like you have to go in there and on the first day you tell her all of your secrets and things. That's ridiculous. People have been seeing therapists for years and they still haven't opened up about some of their deepest issues because it all takes time, which brings me to the second most important lesson that I've learned in therapy. And it's something I think I've had to, you know, take into my life. And that is, what's the rush? Mm -hmm. I feel like we, especially as black women, you know, we always feel like 
we have to do, do, we have to go, go, go. We have to do now. We have to build now. We have to create now. And then you start to ask yourself, well, what's the deadline that I'm rushing against? Oh, it's one that I set? Well, why did I set that deadline? Well, what's ha- going to happen if I miss it? And then you start to realize it's not as big of a deal to miss a deadline that you set. There's no rush. Take your time. Take your time. Make mistakes. Start over. Slow down. Take your time. There's no rush in this life. You always feel like, you know, this life is very short. And, you know, and it is, of course. And in the grand scheme of things, we're here for this long. In the grand scheme of, like, the history of time, we're here for this much of it. And you want to make the most out of every single day. But you have to take care of yourself. And the first step in taking care of yourself is slowing down and not rushing. Don't rush through life. You have to experience it. So that was kind of like very, very incredibly like, a, like it's such a simple message, but it was so deep and it's like changed my life so much once I started applying that to my everyday life. Like, what's the rush? Why are you rushing? What are you, what are you rushing toward? You know what I mean? And it, and it really, it changed a lot of things for me. It really did. And I think the quality of everything that I'm doing now in my life is much better now that I've applied that. Yeah, so it, it, like that's kind of like one of the biggest things that I've uh, learned in therapy. And um, another thing that's like been like a... a incredibly like transformed me is like I've talked about it before just like the issues that I have with food and eating and just all the trauma that's like behind that and obviously that's like all you know from my life and it's been like things I've like been socialized to believe about myself and believe about different types of different types of food and things like that and and um my therapist gave me this exercise and it's called rain and so whenever I find myself getting like overwhelmed with the thought of food and the thought of eating or uh, you know it starts it scares me at times like and things like that I I just do rain and that is R for recognize so recognize what's happening recognize that you have that you are you are going through a feeling right now that is uncomfortable recognize that you are you know in a place that you've been before that is uncomfortable or you're in a new place that is uncomfortable for you but recognize that discomfort so that's the first you have to recognize it and then that is allow the a stands for allow So don't try and push this feeling away. Don't try and go to your coping mechanisms. Allow yourself to feel the feeling. And then the I is for investigate. So investigate this feeling. Why are you feeling this way? What's going on? Where did it come from? What were you doing and when were you doing it and where were you doing it and who were you doing it with when it brought up this feeling? It's a way to allow yourself to, you know, do it in the future to either to either avoid those kinds of things or be aware it's it, the, the the biggest thing about it is awareness awareness in your feelings because that is the step that is like one of the most important steps that you can take towards healing is being aware being aware that these things are even feelings that you're having so that's that's a that's i i'm sorry that's i and then there is n which is nurture You need to take care of yourself. Self-care needs to be more than a buzzword. So you have to find something. Do something that feels good to nurture yourself in that moment that isn't a coping mechanism. So if you, like I, turn to food or alcohol, don't do that. Don't do that because then you're, you're avoiding it. Do something that feels good. Celebrate yourself with something that isn't one of your coping mechanisms. Watch a funny video. Talk to a friend. I don't know, listen to music, have a dance party, go for a walk, nurture yourself. And you have to do that as often as you need to, but even taking five minutes just to be aware. Mindfulness, I know it's like one of those really big buzzwords right now and people are like, well, this doesn't work. Y'all just talking. 
but it really does help you especially when you're having like anxiety attacks in public or you know things like that and you're like I can't control this feeling I don't know where it's coming from you have to be aware that it's a feeling first and you have to investigate it and allow yourself to feel that feeling and you have to nurture it you have to nurture yourself and that is so important to me you know and that other black women nurture themselves because we pour into other people so often we're always pouring into other people trying to you know make this world safe for them and trying to make you know other people we're trying to fix the problems of the world but it's not our problem to fix because it isn't a problem that we created and so to my fellow black women I say to you take care of yourself first you can't pour into other people from an empty cup you cannot you have to you, your cup needs to be at least half full I hope it's I hope it's all the way full before you start deciding that you want to pour into other people but you cannot pour into other people from an empty cup so you have to take care of yourself first. And I know you're like, well, that's selfish. And this is something that my therapist actually brought up to me the other day is what is the definition of the word selfish? It's doing something at the expense of other people. Taking care of yourself is not as something that you do at the expense of other people. Putting yourself first is not something that you do at the expense of other people. Because how can you pour into someone else from an empty cup? So when you start to use the word selfishness, really think about the context that you're using that in, especially when you're talking about yourself. Because most of the time, it's not selfish. It's self-care. Okay, so I want to leave you with one final thought about therapy. Um, or like one just bonus. I know I said three biggest things, but this is kind of like a bonus thing that I feel like is like been super, super monumental in me surviving this year and that is it's not personal don't take it personally I know we all want to be the main character in everybody's lives but the truth is we are only the main character in our own lives I promise you the things you think are are are, are, are personal attacks against you from your friends are not it's not personal do not take it personally you you cannot take things personally uh, like 90% of the times 90% of the time it's not personal. So that's my rant, I guess. I don't know, it was, maybe it was like a lecture slash rant about therapy and why if you have it available to you, um, you should look into it. And so I wanna ask you guys, um, if you do go to therapy, um, what are like the, some lessons that you've learned from therapy that you think would be like incredibly helpful? And if you are not in therapy and you're watching this, um, what are some fears that you have about going into therapy? So thank you guys once again for watching this video please make sure that you like and subscribe and leave us a comment if you're not and if also make sure you check out all the other content that we have on our youtube channel make sure you check out our new podcast and our podcast and make sure you are always going to our website and you have a wonderful rest of your day and i'll see you next week